The narcissist always lies, but you didn't need me to tell you that. But these specific three lies the narcissist always tells you. And the thing is, you know, the thing is, we don't always notice it, but it's there right in front of our eyes. How is it that we get told these lies and we don't notice, but what lies is it? What three specific lies the narcissist always tells? They're not so obvious, they're not obvious. Honestly guys, they're not obvious. But I'm gonna reveal in this video what those three lies are. Hello and welcome back. As always, I hope that you're all doing really well. Guys, I really hope that you guys are doing well. And so this video, right, this video, I just wanna highlight what three lies the narcissist always tells. It's not that they're verbalizing it, you kind of have to see it through their behavior because their behavior reveals a hell of a lot more. And if you're not aware of it, then you're not going to know. And also, and also, it's not just narcissistic individuals that do this, these are toxic people as well. And so that's why I just wanted to highlight what these lies are, or these toxic behaviors that people do, AKA narcissists do, that you can identify and think, okay, I, I need to do something about it. Or you just detach yourself from it, or you get away, or whatever it is that you do. It's just that I wanna make you aware of these three lies or these three behaviors that toxic individuals always do. But, but before I get into the video, just quickly wanna tell you that I do go live on this channel every single week. And if you have any questions or you have something on your mind that you want like a quick answer to, I would say join the live because this is a great place. It's a safe place, actually. You know, you should check out the live chat as well. And if you want, you can participate in it. There's like a really supportive community. Everyone's so kind on there, like guys, for those of you that are watching and you join the lives, big, big love to you because I know that you're so kind and the chat has got this own, its own momentum, its own vibe going. So if you would like to join the lives, check out the description box for more details. Okay, so the lies, the three lies that the narcissist always tells you or always shows you. The first one, right, I'm just, just jump into it, right? So the first one is, the love bombing, the mirroring, the, all of that, basically. How is it, right, that you get into a relationship with someone and they show you this person? They show you a mirage, basically. They show you a mirage. Now, what I mean by that is this, you know, this person presents themselves in a certain way. And we know, we know how important first impressions are. We do. As human beings, we all make first impressions. So the way that we meet someone for the first time, that is where we form basically a concept or a schema of that person. And that's really how we get to know them. That's really how we understand who that person is. We read them in a certain way. So when we have formed that judgment or that concept or schema on that person, that is how we remember them. That's how we know them. So think about it this way, right? The narcissist presents themselves as someone who is very much like you, into the same things, really, really into you, you know, like their behavior, their energy matches that. But then over time, this other person emerges and you're like scratching your head thinking, seriously, like what is this about? And you see that is where we get that cognitive dissonance. That's where it kind of, that damage stays with us because even after the end of the relationship, we're, you know, in our trauma bond and we're thinking, hold on, did I get this wrong? Is this person really narcissistic? Is this person really toxic? Like, why are they being like this? Because I remember, I remember right at the beginning of the relationship, they were like this, and now they're like this. What on earth is going on? Why is this happening? Have I got this wrong? Have I, have I done something to make this person be like this? And so we internalize it and we blame ourselves. That's the damage. That's the abuse. That's what, that's where we get that cognitive dissonance and it enforces the trauma bond. 
So whilst we're in that, whilst we're right at the go, going back into the beginning of the relationship, so we're seeing this person in this way. We formed this judgment or this schema about this person. So this is where we tend to make excuses. So when we see this person being awful, being horrible, being really derogatory to us, you know, removing themselves from us, we're thinking, but it's okay because they are like this, they're just having a bad day. We make an excuse, we justify that behavior. So that's why the narcissist gets away with it and keeps on doing it. That's the lie. That is the biggest lie. Like how, how can you be two or three people in one? And I know like through my client work, I know that, that a lot of you basically struggle with this, basically you struggle to make sense of how can this person be two or three people in one person? Like. How is that possible? But it's because they they present themselves as one person and they are wonderful. They're amazing right at the beginning, but there is no way that they can sustain this because it's fake. It's a lie. It's not really who they are. You know as well as I do that narcissists don't have an identity. They take on people's temporarily, they take on people around them so that they fit in, that they feel part of something, that they feel connected to something. But then once they've got that person, once they are there, this is where they start being themselves because they can't sustain that behavior. They start getting bored. They can't, they can't be nice all the time because their personality, their maladaptive way of thinking, their internal dialogue won't allow them to, which is why they change, which is why they become this person, the real them. Think about it, if they presented this person to you right at the beginning, would you have stayed? Probably not. The second lie, and there I feel this is the most profound, is they tell you that they love you. I mean, like at the time when they tell you, it feels great because it's validating you. It's completely validating you. And why? Why, my friends, would you not believe them? Of course they love you. Like, I mean, they've loved bombed you, they've mirrored you. Why wouldn't they love you? But this love, okay, this love has many different connotations. And love for them doesn't mean the same thing that it does for you. You understand love in a completely different concept to the way that they do. Love for them is transactional, so it's all about what can you do for me. They also tell you this because it's something that you want to hear. And also, I feel at the time, because they're so impulsive, at the time, in that moment, it feels like love to them. They are all loved up in you. They're caught up in you. The energy that you're giving them, the exchange that you're giving them, they're really caught up in that and they're loving it. So I feel like a lot of it is very much impulsive in the moment. But do they actually really understand the meaning of love? They have a displacement of love, understanding of love. It's not the same way that me or you do. Because of their disconnection, because of their inability to be able to connect um, and they have issues with interpersonal relationships, they can't love you in the way that you are expecting them to or you want them to. They can't sustain this feeling because it's about transaction. They love you if you're doing things for them. They love you if you're conforming. That's their idea of love. It's not the fact that it's reciprocated, your energy or your kindness, your compassion, your patience, that's not reciprocated. They're never gonna do that. So please don't think just because the narcissist didn't show that to you, they're gonna be doing that for another person. They might be doing it right at the beginning of a relationship when they're love bombing someone, but it doesn't mean anything. So it, they're very disconnected from who they are. So they're not going to be reciprocating that and love, does not mean the same thing for them as it does for you. And I feel like because of the way that we understand what love is, this trips us up. This trips us up and this is why we stay longer in this relationship. This is why we try to make it work because we're, we're judging it on the fact that this person loves me, we're in a relationship for a certain amount of time, but it's actually an attachment that you're feeling to this person or an attachment that they feel to you, which it could also be codependent. It could be that you're also, you know, you can't let them go because of your own attachment style. So that is one of the, also one of the biggest lies that the narcissist tells you. 
And the third one, the third and final one is the future that they promised you that never is and never was. So I feel like this is really damaging and this also in, you know, induces the trauma bond because when someone promises you a future, makes you believe that this is a relationship that's gonna last for eternity, for the whole of your lifetime. And it's like you make plans to make this relationship last, you make plans for your future. You create an understanding, you create a pathway within your brain and you feel like, okay, this is how it's going to be. You create this future and this hope for the future that this relationship is going to work. But the narcissist has no intention of it ever lasting to that point. You see, it's like what I said in the second point, they're impulsive. They tell you what you wanna hear in the moment because they want you to stay. They want this relationship to last in that moment. They know, my friends, they know on some level that this isn't gonna last because they know that you're gonna see through their behavior. They know that you're gonna see through all of this and you're gonna think, I don't, I don't want this. Like they know you're gonna leave. So they have to make this work in that time period that they've got you. And if that means telling you that this, you know, relationship is going to last forever, I'm going to marry you, we're going to be in a marriage, we're going to have children, you know, whatever it is, or we're going to grow old together. This keeps you stuck in that loop thinking that actually, yes, you are going to have this future with the narcissist, that you are going to have this relationship, you know, and it's going to be amazing for the rest of your life. So you make plans, you kind of adapt yourself to that knowledge, knowing that you're going to be staying with this person. Now, this person has intentions for a future with you. And when they leave, or when this all breaks down, this is so hard because it's, it's about grieving that future. It's about grieving that potential of what could have been, which again, really entrenches that trauma bond and it really keeps you in that mindset thinking, you know, but why? Maybe I had got this wrong. Maybe I didn't understand this in the right way. Maybe I could have done something to prevent it. But the narcissist told you that. Okay, guys, you've got to remember, they told you that in the moment because they're very impulsive and they had to tell you this to keep you stuck, to keep you in that moment, to keep you with them. They never wanted you to leave. They don't want you to leave. So they've got to tell you these things to make you stay. They don't want you to leave because they need you to meet their needs. And that is the sad truth about it. They want you to meet their needs. This is why they keep you stuck. And they tell you what you want to hear. So knowing this, all right, knowing this, I hope this really helps you, you know, on your journey to healing. Because it's not anything that you have done wrong. It's not anything that you didn't see or you weren't, you know, able enough to see it. It's that you were told these lies. These lies to keep you stuck with that person, which is maybe why you stayed longer than, you know, you were supposed to. This is done because they wanted to keep you. They wanted you to stay. They wanted you to be there and keep this going. But I hope that this makes sense and I hope that this gives you more uh, information or more understanding to this and what they are doing. So if you are someone that is going through this at the moment, please know that I do offer one-to-one -one consultations. Please see the description box below. I also have a journal club and a mentorship which is a great um, tool for you alongside if you're already receiving therapy or counseling. This would really help kind of alongside that therapeutic work. Please see the description box for more details. And also I have a Discord server, which is absolutely free for you to join. It is a community of like-minded individuals off social media where you can connect and you can share your experiences in a safe space. And if you are interested in joining, please see the link um, in the description box for the Discord server. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I really, really hope, really hope that this video has helped you and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.